All right, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Theory. Today we're going to talk about chord progressions. This will influence your musical writing for the rest of the time you have musical writing. It's exciting, and I think this is one of the coolest days of theory, because you learn how things work and how things could work. Okay, so let's first talk about some chords. Let's write our handy dandy key of C major on the board. All right, I'm just writing triads above here. Oops. All right, so when we talk about chords and we ask you to analyze with Roman numerals, we ask you to put chord functions down. So chord functions basically means each chord has a specific thing it does. It functions a certain way. So let's look at why these things function a certain way and what they do. All right, so let's start with our handy dandy one chord. So our one chord is home. It's where we wake up. It's where we go to bed. It's where we brush our teeth. It's where we live. This is a place we want to be. So one is home. Okay. Moving on to our two chord, which is minor in a major key. So our two chord is our first chord that we're going to talk about that we call a predominant chord. Now this isn't like predominant like it happens a lot. It's predominant. <clears throat> Question of the day, vocab. What is the dominant? What do we talk about when we talk about the dominant? It's the five chord, right? It's the five chord, right? So the two chord being a predominant chord comes before the five. It's pre five. So the two chord wants to go to the five. And a lot of these chords will either be the one, the five, or want to go to one of them. Because the one and five are our foundations of Western harmony. Because we're cool like that. Okay. So moving on to our three chord. As our three chord, major, minor, diminished, augmented in, the, in a major key. It's minor, our three is minor, happy days. Mm, that's a tasty sound. So our three is minor. Now the three chord, I'll be honest, doesn't have many friends. Our one chord is home. Our two kind of wants to go somewhere. Our three, eh, it doesn't really have too much function. Let me show you why. Okay. So if you look at our one chord, and look at the notes of the one chord and look at the notes of the three chord. We have a few in common, right? We have this E and the G common in both. What are our most important notes of a triad? Any, any idea? Any guess? The root and the, uh, the top note. It's the root and not the top note. It's the root and the third. Good. So the root and the third are the most important notes. So this has the third, but it doesn't have the root. So it kind of sounds like this one chord, but it's minor, so it kind of doesn't. It doesn't have the root, so it kind of doesn't. And it doesn't really want to go too many places. So the three, we're just going to say, we use this in what we call an area of one. And we'll talk about that more in just a little bit. But we don't use it too often. It really doesn't have any friends. It's kind of that awkward kid that you invite to the party to be nice, and you kind of talk to him. But he kind of wants to be on his own. Poor kid. Okay, so three is an area of one. Now our next chord going on is our four. Is our four major or minor in a major key? Major. Is major. Happy days. So our four is another one that we call a predominant chord. And just like the two, where do you think the four is going to want to go? Five is going to want to go to the 5. It wants to go to our dominant. It wants to go to the 5 chord. This is where it likes to hang out. It likes to talk to the cool kids in the 5. So we have home. We have where we go to before 5. We have kind of an area of home. It kind of feels like home. It's almost like you're around the block from your house. We have the 4 chord, which again wants to go with the cool kids in the five area. And then we get to our six chord. 
SO6 major minor diminished augmented okay. is minor. Okay. Now the six chord, I think the six chord's cool. It's underrated. It's kind of like the cool kids that just kind of chill and don't really act like cool kids, but they're still cool and everybody knows it. So the six chord also shares some cool chord tones with our tonic. So what again is our most important notes of our tonic triad or of a triad? Mm. It's the, the root and the third. So we have the C and the E. Well, let's check out our six chord. What else do we have in our six chord? C. Our C and the E. So it sounds kind of like the one because it has these two really important notes. So again, we use this one and what we call an area of one. So we have an area of one. It's kind of chilling around the home. It's like the neighborhood. You know, you haven't quite gone away. You can kind of see your house if you turn around. You're in the neighborhood, but it's not quite home. Okay? You don't really know if you're coming from home, if you're going to home, but you're around about there. And we have one more chord to talk about, and that is our seven chord. Sorry. We skipped our five. That's okay. We'll come back to it. We have our seven chord. So our seven chord, is it major, minor, diminished? Diminished. diminished. Okay. And because it's diminished, it has a very strong pull. And you guess where it's going to go? It's going to go home. So this wants to go home. So it's like you've been out all day doing, you know, errands, you went to go grocery shopping, you went and had your jacket repaired, and you picked up the kids from school, and then they're in the back seat fighting, one of them says he's going to be sick, and all you want to do is go home and put them to bed, because you're frustrated from all the things you have to do today. This always goes to one. The seven always goes to one, forever and always, until you get to theory four and we throw the rules out the window, because theory four is cool. So seven wants to go to one. It is our, one of our strongest chords, if not the strongest chord, diatonically, in this whole set here. It is, always goes to one. Our root is our half step away from one. It goes up, and we go to one. So where does the seven go? To one. To one. Have I made that point? Yeah. Yes. OK, we have one more chord to talk about. And this is, we have our tonic, and we have our dominant, our two big um, foundations of Western harmony. So our dominant, is it major, minor, diminished, augmented? Major. It is major. Okay. Even in a minor key, we make our five major. Now let's look at why the five is so cool and hip and awesome. We usually put a seven on our five chord. And there's a few reasons for that. Okay. So let's just spell out our five here. In the key of C, what is our five chord? G. G. Okay, could you spell that out for me? G. Okay, and we'll add the seventh on later. And what's our tonic triad? C E G. Good. Okay, so you have one special thing with this five chord that makes it want to go to the one. Any idea what that is? It has a special note. We call it a tendency note. There's a few of those in our major scale, but it's a tendency note that wants to go somewhere. It tends to go there. Any idea what it is? Is it, um, is it the D wanting to go to the C? It's not the D wanting to go to the C, but you're on the right track. It's one of these notes that want to go to the C. It's the B, right? Any idea why the B wants to go to the C? What do we call that in our major scale? Any guess? It's a leading tone. Good. The five contains the leading tone. There are only two chords that we really use that contain the leading tone, and one of them is the five chord. So it has this really strong fella right there. That is our leading tone. It wants to go up a half step to the tonic. That's where it wants to live. That's where it wants to be. So we get there, and we have this tension, and we go, eh, 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 tonic. So the five wants to go home. That is almost always where the five goes, because it has this tendency tone. Now, there's something even cooler about the five chord. What if I add the seventh here? Sounds a little bit different, but kind of the same. 
Now, one thing I really like about the 5 chord is adding this 7. What's our interval between this B and this F that I just added? Are you sure it's a perfect fifth? Count half steps, think of key signatures, however you get there. What's a perfect fifth up from B? These six half steps. Okay. And how many half steps away is that F natural? Five of them. Okay. So what kind of fifth do we have? If it's a perfect fifth that's lower to half step, what kind of fifth is that? It's a diminished fifth. Okay. Any idea what else we call a diminished fifth? Augmented fourth, or there's a special name for it. Tritone. It's a tritone. <laughs> bingo, bingo. So between these two notes, you have a tritone. And tritones are one of the kind of harshest intervals we have. It's really tense, and it wants to do something. It wants to go somewhere. So we have this tendency tone, and we have this tritone. This usually wants to go down. This goes up to our strongest tones in our triad. So our leading tone goes up, and this goes down, so we have our leading tone, and we have this tritone, and it gets really tense, and you're kind of, you're tired of running your errands, and the kids are just bothering you in the back seat, you have to stop for gas, you have 30 things to do at home, you have to make dinner, and you're just getting all tense, and you just can't wait, and you get home, and you're happy, because this is where you want to be. Everyone can watch TV, can make dinner in peace, can read a book, and everything's good. So this is why our five chord wants to go to one. You have your leading tone and you have the tritone, which is why we usually put the seventh in there. So the five tone is a really, really strong chord. Now, it gets even cooler. If I did this, what kind of chord do we have now? It's a seven, right? We have this seven diminished chord. And all I did was take away the root of the five. So a five chord and a seven chord are kind of the same because you still have this leading tone and you have this tritone still. And it kind of resolves the same. The cool thing about a five chord is we know diminished chords are really kind of eerie, gross sounding kind of things that just kind of make your skin crawl a little bit. Well, a five chord, when we add this, we have all that tension still, but we make it sound happier. Yeah. We make it less tense. We make it, your skin doesn't crawl quite so much, but you still want to go somewhere. So the five, the five is one of the coolest chords. And that's why one sounds like one is because we have a five. So we have home. We have two chords that want to go home. We have a couple chords that want to go to the five before we go to home. It's kind of our last errand of the day. And then we have a couple chords that kind of sound like they're in an area of one. Okay? So this is why it is, but now how do we use it? There's a really cool diagram I'm going to show you. Everybody have this before I erase it? Awesome. So when we start chord progressions, like we start our day. We want to start at home. So we're going to start with one. Now there's a couple things that if you're starting a whole piece, you can kind of start before one, just a chord or two. But basically you want to start with one. Okay? We're going to put it in brackets. It'll make sense a little bit later. And the next chord we want to go to, you can go through a few different ones, but the next chord we kind of want to go to is one that sounds a bit like one. So we're just kind of, we're in the neighborhood. We haven't quite gone too far. We're in the neighborhood. So what, which one of these chords, there's a couple of them, sound kind of like one? Six, I mean three or six. The three and the six, right? Well, let's go to the three first. So if we go to the three first, and then we're still gonna be in the neighborhood, but we're gonna get a little farther away from it, and we're gonna go to the six. Remember how I said the three doesn't really have any friends? He's the awkward kid at the party? You 
usually, we kind of skip the three. You can use it, and if you use it, this is where you want to use it. But we generally skip the three and go from the one to the six. Okay? Pop tunes do this all the time, because it's really cool. So we go from the one to the six. So we've kind of worn out our area of one. We want to go somewhere else. So our objective is to get to the five before we get to the one. But there's some chords that we can use before we get to the five. Now looking at this, which couple chords do we do before we go to the five? Which ones are pre-dominant chords? Two. We have the two chord, good. And what other one usually goes before the five? The four chord, good. So check this out. This is why we have brackets. Because the six can go to either one of these. So the six can go to either the two or the four. But guess what? The four can also go to the two because you're still in this predominant zone. So we're just going to draw an arrow from the four to the two. Now the two wants to go to the five a little more than the four. It wants a little harder. So we usually don't go from the four, from the two to the four because you're losing a little bit of momentum in your chord progression. We usually, if we do this, go from the four to the two because the two has a stronger sound. Okay, so we've kind of worn out our area of one. We've kind of worn out our predominant stuff. So we're going to go to our dominant. <clears throat> now, there are two chords that kind of sound like the dominant. One is, kind of obviously, what do you think it's going to be? Five. The five. So we have the five chord. And what do you think the other one is going to be? Seven diminished. It's our diminished seven. Good. We're going to put this in right now. Okay. And either of these chords can go to either of those chords. But, like this 4 can go to the 2, the 5 can go to the 7. So we're just going to draw an arrow there. The 7 doesn't usually go to the 5 because the 7 is stronger. So if we go from the 7 to the 5, we're kind of backtracking a little bit and losing momentum, and you're going to have a less strong push to the 1. And then from here we go to, guess where we're going to go? Where does the 7 go forever and always? We go home. We go to the 1. So we start out at home. We kind of chill in the neighborhood a little bit. We run an errand or two. We go pick up the kids, and then we go home. And this is the whole story you get to tell. And this is where you're going to want to start any time you write something. You're going to want to start with this kind of chord progression. Now, as we get later in theory, there's other things that we get to insert here and there and make it a little more interesting, and we can add some more stuff to tell a bit longer story. But this is where we start. So this is where we want to go. This is where we want to come from. Now from here, this one, doo, 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 you can go to any one of these chords and start it all over again. So you go back home and then you went, oh, I forgot to pick up my jacket at the dry cleaners and then go get it and come back. Now we have a couple cadences that we talk about. Any idea, do you remember what some of these cadences are? We have our perfect authentic, and what is the perfect authentic cadence? Uh, Five to one, and root position. Mm -hmm. And the soprano ends on? The root. The tonic, the right. Tonic. The root. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have a perfect authentic. We also have an imperfect authentic cadence. What are a couple other ones? Mm. Uh, we have a half cadence. And what does a half cadence end on? Five. Ends on the five. So if we were to end on the five and a half cadence, we can go anywhere after that. So we're also going to do this little dashed. I can go anywhere arrow from the 5. So the 1 can go anywhere after you're done with your chord progression. If you end on a 5 with a half cadence, the 5 can go anywhere. See how more and more possibilities keep happening? Oh, I love this diagram. 
Okay, can we name another chord progression? Or sorry, another cadence? Playable. Playable cadence. So what's a playable cadence? Um, four to one. That's a four to one. Oh, that's kind of cool. Four to one. <laughs> so that four can go to the one, and then the one can go wherever. Has so many options. And there's one more kind of cadence that we talk about. Deceptive. Deceptive cadence. And what is a deceptive cadence? It's a five. Anything to a six. It's anything to a six. Oh. So we kind of build up like we're going to go to the one and go, ha, never mind, we're going to the six. So in that case, the six takes the place of the one. So the six can go wherever it wants after that. And we start the whole thing all over again. I love chord progressions because it seems like there's so many restrictions. But when you get into it, there's so many options, so many ideas, so many things you can do. Any questions on any of this stuff? Or this wonderful, awesome diagram? Awesome. So let's listen. So you can see it, we can talk about it, but it doesn't make it too much sense until we actually listen to it. So I'm going to hop back there on the piano, and I'm going to kind of tell you what I'm going to play. And then listen to it and see. Listen how it sounds. Yeah. Actually, I have a question. So if you end on a six, if you do a deceptive, um, does it have to go back to like one, or can you start? Like, could you go after that start at like a four? Um, you could start at a four, but once you get to the four, you're going to want to follow this progression back to the okay. one, or wherever you're kind of wanting to end the progression. So that's what this dashed line on all of this stuff means is that it can go to any one of those, and then you just follow it through, okay. and then you go to any one of those, and you follow it through. Especially after a deceptive cadence, I would recommend going to the one, though. Good question. Okay. Any other ones? Okay, I'm going to hop back there on the Panano. So we're going to be in our handy dandy key of C for those playing at home. Can I hear that pretty well? Okay, so we're at home. We're at home. We're waking up in the morning. We're going to chill in the neighborhood. Let's go to the six chord. Hear how it kind of sounds like the one, but it's minor, so it has a different timbre. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the two chord. And the two chord wants to go where? To the 5. We're going to add a 7 to it. And then where does the 5 want to go? 1. To the 1. So here's your home. And just like that, we're back home. And do you hear how it keeps wanting to go forward and keeps wanting to go forward until we get to that 1 again? Okay? Let's try another one. That's just one of our many options. So here's our 1. Ah, pretty, we're home. Even though it doesn't have any friends. I'm going to go to the three to make it happy. And you can skip the six if you wanted to. So we're going to go straight to, let's say, the four. And then where does the, five, the four want to go? I just gave it away. Five. The five. And then back to the tonic. OK, what if I went, let's try one, we wake up at home, to the six again, because that's one of the coolest ways to start a chord progression. Let's go to the four. But from there, we can also go to the two. And then from there, we can go to the five. But from the five, we can also go to the seven. And then there we go to the tonic. One of our millions of options. Or there's the tonic. And then we go to the three. And then, just for funsies, we go to the six. We're just talking to the neighbors, chilling around the neighborhood. And then let's try two. And then uh, let's go with a five. And then, where does the five want to go? One. Unless it's deceptive. Ah. Uh, <laughs> And you feel how kind of unsettling that is? You deceptive me. <laughs> yeah. So usually from there you want to go start the next one, next part of your progression on the one chord because the deceptive is just so unsettling. 
nobody likes a deceptive cadence unless, you know, you're the composer. So there's our one again. So if we start on the one, somebody throw out a chord that we can go to next. Three. The three, okay. Frank, where should we go next? Um, four. Four, okay. Matt, which, where should we go next? Seven. Seven. Andrea, that doesn't leave you too many options. One. And to the one. So pretty. And you hear how it keeps wanting to go someplace. Every chord goes to where you hope it will go. Unless it's a deceptive cadence. Okay? Let's do it again! Allie, where should we start? One. Because we want to wake up at home. Alright, Andrea, pick another one. The next one. Have a couple options. Go to the six. Happy days. Frank, where should we go next? Uh, two. A two, alright. And Matt, where should we go next? To the five. To the five, alright. And that's it. Half cadence. It's kind of unsettling, isn't it? A little bit. Not as unsettling as the deceptive progression. But the five chord, the half cadence, especially because I added a seventh, is kind of unsettling. So, again, when we start the next progression, we're going to want to start back home. Alright, so this is the kind of thing you use anytime you do a composition. This is where you start. Any questions on any of these? Do you want to hear anything else? No? Awesome. For your homework, I want you to write an eight measure composition, the four part writing like we've been doing. And I want you to start with a chord progression. Use inversions if you'd like. But I want you to start with this chord progression. This is what we're going to focus on, but make sure it still has our proper voice leading and all that fun stuff, okay? Any questions before we leave today? No? Awesome class period, guys. Have a good one.